everyone and welcome to this presentation of our latest course. Actually, we are very proud to present this course about violin for tango. Uh, this course is one of the most complete and innovative that what we think um, about uh, as regards um, violin uh, e-learning. And we have a very special guest to talk about this. We have three very important musicians uh, we will be talking to about this course. They are Gabriela Olsese and uh, Maestro Rafael Gintoli and Maestro uh, Javier Weintraub. Before we start talking with them, let's see a short preview of this course. The violin is an instrument that, by its cantabilidad, by its palette, sonora, fue incluido en el tango como un gran advenimiento. La década del 50 y del 70 es un periodo de cambio estructural bastante grande en la Argentina y desde lo artístico y desde lo cultural se vio nutrido de, de mucho músico inmigrante, de mucho artista inmigrante, que le dio sobre todo al tango una transformación y un crecimiento sobre todo en lo melódico y en lo armónico. el látigo es, son los eh, glissando que se puede hacer en forma eh, única o sea con una sola cuerda con una sola voz En la medida en que el, el violín va integrando distintas agrupaciones que se van ampliando hasta convertirse en la famosa orquesta típica de tango, el violín va eh, interpretando distintos roles que los hace ya en una forma constante y, e interactiva con todos los demás miembros de su agrupación. ejemplos sobre cómo se incluye este instrumento en formaciones como los cuartetos, violín, piano, bandoneón y contrabajo y los quintetos, violín, piano, bandoneón, contrabajo y guitarra. Esta pieza tan característica, tan mundialmente famosa, tan requerida, tan sentida, recordemos que hasta nuestra hoy reina máxima, el día que se casó en Holanda, pidió ser, que la tocaran en su casamiento. Okay, so as you just saw, we have a lot of um, 
uh, important things to talk about. First thing with Gabriela Orsese, uh, she's a violinist at the Orchestra Teatro Colón at Buenos Aires, artistic coordinator of the Buenos Aires International Violin Competition and former director uh, of uh, the Orchestra, uh, Orchestral Academy at Teatro Colón. Gabriela, first thing I want to ask you first, thank you very much for being here. Uh, first thing I want to ask you is, uh, you did a great job in shaping and projecting the full course, which covers many aspects. Which, which are the main principles that you followed in order to make, to make this outline of this course? Okay, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Piazzolla's anniversary, and knowing that until now there is no course or seminar for violinists with an academic approach to the tango were the uh, initial engines uh, of my project. Uh, we begin uh, with a historical approach you know, to tango in which the development of the role of the violin in that uh, path is also explained. Then the typical uh, execution techniques uh, are showed. showed. Uh, and um, we continue with practical examples of tango formation integrated by the violin and uh, we conclude with the fundamental repertoire of tango for violin. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, we were just noticing just before we start recording that actually tango is part of contemporary music, is it? Yes, absolutely. Tango has more or less hundred years of history, no? And it, it is still uh, developing, developing, no? Uh, on, actually, we have a lot of composers, young composers, uh, who maintain the, the tradition of tango, and they are still um, exploring, because in uh, my vision, the tango is open, uh, for new influences and uh, it uh, needs uh, a develop. Um, Gabriela, you said that uh, tango has about uh, one century of history. Now I want to ask to Maestro Gintoli just to make a little picture uh, of what was tango, what, what was actually born, let's say in the 20s. So, Maestro Gintoli, ti chiedo in poche parole, se, se si può, quale fosse la situazione per il tango negli anni venti? Negli anni venti eh, in verità era già sviluppato il tango argentino, cioè erano i primi passi, ma, ma grandi passi a livello internazionale. Ricordiamo, Just a moment, esempio, yeah, un, momento, un momento solo, Rafael, che, che traduco, let me translate. So, in the 20s, uh, actually, tango already existed, uh, it was the first steps of tango, but it already existed, and it was already developed at the, at, at, in an international scenario. Prego. Ricordiamo che in Europa, specialmente a, a, a Parigi, già si ballava moltissimo il tango argentino con degli ensembli argentini che andavano lì. Uh, there was yeah. Argentine ensembles going to Paris, for example, in Europe, Paris and other um, cities of Europe, and it was already very much danced. Nel, anche in quell'epoca, eh, negli Stati Uniti, eh, faceva i suoi film Rodolfo Valentino. Già a quell'epoca, Julio De Caro, un violinista, suonava con il suo ensemble, il suo sestetto che comprendeva due violini, due ban bandoneon, uh, un contrabbasso e un pianoforte <coughs> e, e loro già eh, si muovevano e lui suonava un violino molto speciale che poi sicuramente sentirete un pochettino più avanti con il maestro Weintraub eh, che era il violino cornetta so let me, let me introduce sì. Rafael. So, the big star, the big movie star, Rodolfo Valentino, big movie star in the 20s, he already used to dance tango. Actually, he didn't dance it 
really in, in, a, in a perfect way, but uh, to tell how much tango was already entering the, um, the environment of uh, movie, cinema, and of course, and of course, um, perform, uh, performed music. Um, uh, and then uh, also, um, Maestro Gentoli is talking about uh, um, um, the first composers, and one of them, one of the most important, is De Caro, right? Now I have another question for Maestro Javier um, Weintraub. The question is, uh, what about the the particular playing of uh, uh, a particular violin that you, that you have? But before this, let's look, let's have a look at this short video of a performance of Malajunta. In the video we saw Maestro Javier playing the violin corneta, which as you see is an instrument very, with a very special accessory. Javier, could you describe this instrument for us? Yes, of course. This is a, a beer, very rare instrument. It's made... Um, uh, the first creator was Johannes Stroh. Um, this is, a, this is a, an original Stroh. Uh, horn violin or, or, or violin corneta, like we say, it. and it's made for for um, recordings uh, session. You know, uh, they put the, the microphone inside of this device. Yes, uh, and and it's it's avoided the contamination of the other instrument. Um, it's a it's a great <laughs> idea. If we think, um, De Caro was the the first violinist that used it. I think uh, more for for the for the particularity of the instrument. Um, it has not a, a resonant box, so the sounds come from another way. You, I, I don't know if, if you stand me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we were just <laughs> noticing it. If you sh can show better, actually, we see that the violin has not any body. No, it's a violin I, without body, and it's just the cornetta. What is that little, that little it's, thing? It's, it's a very special <laughs> device because it's the, it's the monitor, you know. <laughs> for ah, the it's the ear sound. monitor yes. for the player. It's, yeah, it's great. Very, uh, it's very special. If you want, yes. I, 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 I play. Yeah, yeah, little, yeah. Try that. Yes. Yes. It sounds great. It sounds, it like sounds a, great, like, like really a, great. Like a violin, you know? It's you would great. never tell that it that it's a violin without a body. Yes, it's, yeah, uh, it's, it's, strange. it's not a strange uh, instrument. Uh, yeah. It's not very useful in, 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 that, uh, in, 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 in these uh, years because uh, we, we have another practicity, I, I don't know how we say, but it, it was a very, 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 uh, very so useful it, instrument in, the, in that... In that uh, so I guess that is not produced anymore. No, There's no, no one... I think in the in the in Romania or in the Balkans maybe, but no, no, it's, it's, it's so this is a, a, a 1930s instrument, so uh, no, no, now yeah, it's so it's it's also pretty rare, I think. Yes, yes, pretty rare. So now I have a question for Gabriela. Uh, one of the great things that you added to the outline of this course, we have more than 15 video minus one tracks. What are they? 
uh, I think the possibility no, of making music together with a typical tango orchestra performed by, by outstanding Argentine musicians uh, in the interpretation of tango is an, uh, in my opinion, is an open uh, door for a deeper immersion, a more concrete experience of interaction and a door of, uh, to, to the imagination. Since the violinist has the, the complete video uh, available, that is to say that the, the orchestra and the, the violinist playing the tango, and then uh, you can also opt for a minus one where the uh, orchestra plays the same tango, you choose, but without the violin giving uh, so the, the possibility to participate, to try new interpretations, maybe, and uh, opening uh, the, the windows, uh, windows of your imagination, maybe to an improvisation or creation. Some can, could argue with the minus one tracks. Well, now the, this is um, we have video minus one tracks, yeah. but also uh, this is the same with the audio minus one tracks. Yeah. That uh, that is the tempo remains always the same, so you cannot pretend that you have a different temp uh, tempo. No. Uh, no. Well. Yes. Uh, what is your opinion about that? Because you know this is a little bit contradictory. Many violinists they say that it's good. Some violinists they say it's not so good. What do you, what do you answer to that? But in, 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 it is true, but uh, in any case, it's a um, very uh, valuable tool to practice, yeah. no? Yeah. And to 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 feel that you are playing with a uh, an um, a really typical orchestra. With, with a real so, band. And yes, which is exactly and, the case. Uh, yes. In any case, you have to, to think that the tango has a specific rhythm. The rhythm normally is fixed, no? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, the, the rubatos and rhythms exist, but uh, the, the base, no? The, 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 the pattern of rhythm is very fixed in any case. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Gabriela. Now I come back to Maestro Rafael. I wanted to ask to Maestro Rafael to have an, a, a sh to to give us a short picture of what was the situation in the 80s. So let's say just before the 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 entering of Piazzolla in the scenario of the tango. Allora, Rafael, ti sto chiedendo in pochissime parole se riesci in un minuto a darmi una fotografia della situazione per il tango negli anni Ottanta, cioè prima dell'ingresso di Piazzolla. Negli anni Ottanta, cioè tutto, tutto ciò che era anche precedente agli anni Ottanta, ognuno dei compositori ne aveva una propria linea, una propria forma di comporre esteticamente sulla base del tango le sue composizioni. So Perciò, before the 80s every composer had its own way, its own ideology and its so and its and, and his own aesthetical parameters uh, esatto. to follow for their composition. Eh, uno dei de, de loro era Salgan, Horacio Salgan, un grande, veramente grande, che poco tempo fa ha inciso moltissime cose il, il maestro Barenboim. So one of them was Horacio Salgan, the composers. He was so important in his, his composition that Maestro Barenboim uh, dedicated many uh, recordings to his composition, right? Exactamente. Le, la apparizione di Piazzolla ha fatto al, all'inizio molta resistenza da quelli, uh, non so se, se tanto dei compositori tanghistici come de, soprattutto dei musicisti che dovevano suonare questi brani, anche degli utenti che andavano ai concerti, che si resistevano a, al, al fenomeno, diciamo, estetico di Piazzolla. Ok, e... that's very interesting, let me translate it. So when Piazzolla stepped actually into the scenario of tango, he found much resistance, both from the musicians and from the other composers, and also from the audience who probably found found it 
too strange, right? Too much, uh, too much more than we can say. Il problema è che eh, pian pianino lui è riuscito ad accaparare, eh, a prendere veramente eh, a tutto il mondo musicale con le sue composizioni, soprattutto anche perché lui, eh, lui ha fusionato il tango col jazz parecchie volte, eh, suonando con alcuni de degli iconi eh, del jazz, anche con la musica pop. So Piazzolla actually step by step he really conquered the consent of the audience and we have to also to consider that Piazzolla put many many real real new uh, elements into his music including a kind of fusion with other kinds of music like jazz and sometimes also pop music. Tutti i giovani compositori hanno convergono su di lui, sulla, sulla sua musica e non si possono separare, è molto difficile anche oggi delle volte a, a, a spiazzarsi dello stesso Piazzolla. So, uh, he became a big influencer for all the youngs that came after him, all, both, the, both the musicians and the, the players and uh, the next generation of composers and nowadays it's very difficult to not consider Piazzolla if you are a tango composer or a violin, uh, a tango violin player. So let's watch a little excerpt for a great performance which is included in this course, title is De Carissimo. I think it's the first time that in, in a violin course uh, we see dancer. This is a great feature that we have in this course. We have more than one performance uh, which is played only with the band or band and dancers. Because of course uh, tango is a dance and so there is a big relationship between violin playing and the dancer. What, could, what can you tell about this? Which are the, the most difficult aspects of this uh, subject. I think the, the better way to learn play the violin with the dancers is learning the dancer, the, the dance of the tango, you know? Um, it's so beautiful and it's so complete, the, the, that art, and um, uh, it's, a, it's a really great complement to the to the to the music to the violinist uh, playing. I I think it's not difficult, but uh, it's it's beautiful. I don't know how it's said. Um, yeah. It's like the it's like the the, the, the birds flying together, you know. Um, and I think yeah. I, and I think it's a great it's a pleasure uh, in in the in the scenario. For I, the player, I really, yes. I really, I really think that we must to, to learn the dance. You know, the dance is beautiful, yeah. uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, a great apport. Yes. Thank you. Uh, now I can, I come back to Maestro Rafael. I want to ask him. Uh, we have 
you know, in, in the course you talk about the three, uh, three main elements in violin uh, playing for tango, which is, um, uh, which is rhythm, espressivo, espressione, and then actually how to play. Can you give us a short understanding of these elements? Ad esempio, in, in la, nella ca quasi cadenza di, di comincio, tu sei absoluta, è scritto di questa maniera. Perdon. Eh, ma tu già lo suoni diversamente perché lo stai pensando quasi come eh, le lettere di quel de carissimo tango dedicato a Julio De Caro. Yeah, so, so, so. Posso? No, no, yes, I just wanted to say what we, you just played is this is as it is written, but then you play different, which is che tu lo suoni diverso. Ah, perdon. Yeah, yeah. squadrato però è sempre sulla base del tango e poi appare il tango già come danza Questa è la base, cioè la parte ritmica, specialmente perché si deve ballare, cioè il tango è concepito inizialmente sempre per ballare, poi dopo si è fatto il tango canción per cantarlo e finalmente quello che si usa tanto è il, il tango strumentale. So there is a part which is talked and a part which is danced, so it's basically a dance, but there is some talking inside, as you just heard from, from Maestro Raphael playing. Thank you, Raphael. Okay, now we go back to Gabriela. Uh, in this course, of course, we couldn't miss La Comparsita, which is probably one of the most, uh, the most renowned pieces of, of all times. Uh, regarding the whole scenario of music, yes. not only tango. Yes, absolutely. Of, yes. Well, I cannot, I cannot help but ask you a question. But why the comp besides it's a great composition, okay? But why is it so famous? Sometimes much more famous than others who would deserve, you know, the same, the same fame. Uh, okay, good question. Uh, you know, the La Comparsita uh, is a tango that was actually born as a march uh, to accompany a carnival troupe. It's a carnival, La Comparsa, La Comparsa del Carnevale, uh, born in, uh, in Montevideo, Uruguay, uh, between 1915 and 1916. There's no uh, uh, fixed date. And 10 years later, eh, La Comparsita um, began to be heard in Buenos Aires. And it was adapted eh, to the rhythm of a tango with another lyrics. And since uh, 1925, it uh, was, uh, was a hit in Buenos Aires. But it was a hit because Carlos Gardel uh, adapted uh, and included La Comparsita in his repertoire, recorded it and, uh, with his guitars, and made La Comparsita famous right away. Uh, by the end of the 20s, uh, La Comparsita was the, the hit of, of Buenos Aires, and uh, it is still Yes, it, it, it is and it will be in the next decades, probably. Um, and to perform uh, yeah. a particular version of, uh, yeah. of the Comparsita, you choose to have Maestro Erzan Kulibaya. Yeah. Can you tell you why? And then after this, we will, we will watch a little piece of his okay. performance. Okay, yes. Uh, Erzan Kulibaya was invited to present his uh, interpretation of uh, La Comparsita 
in, uh, in the arrangement by uh, Vicente Sito, the solo violin arrangement, which uh, Ruggero Ricci usually played as an encore and uh, who also recorded it. His passion for tango uh, has led their son to make very interesting arrangements for solo violin, for chamber groups, for violin and a little orchestra, which is why uh, I consider uh, Ersan one of the most uh, outstanding violinists looking towards uh, to the future of tango. And actually you will see how modern he is and how modern, how precise, really amazing his performance is. Let's watch it. This production is actually, as we said, entirely made in Argentina and is made by Estación Buenos Aires. Uh, Gabriela, what can you tell about that? Well, uh, Estación Buenos Aires is uh, actually a musical project born 12 years ago uh, together with uh, Maestro Rafael Gintoli, my friend and my teacher. Uh, who is also the director of the Estación Buenos Aires. Together we um, proposed uh, musical projects, um, programs, I new ideas, that, and the, the, the goal of our uh, project is the originality and search, search for something new, like this course. Okay, so we are at the end. Um, uh, let me thank Gabriela Olsese, Maestro Weintraub, Maestro Jean Tolly for staying with us. We actually have an idea of a further development of this course, but we are not talking about this now. So thank you all and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank see you, you soon. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye.